Hello there. This is my first video since moving. We moved last month to Kentucky from North Carolina. We're a military family if you've missed that in the past. So this is actually our third state in three years. We've lived in three states since 2020. So <laughs> hopefully we'll be here for a while and we won't have to do this moving thing again for, well, you know, with the military, you really never can tell. So we'll see, but for now, today I wanna to show you my new sewing space. It's quite a bit smaller than the other sewing spaces I've had in the last two houses, but I have sewn in all kinds of spaces, as you can imagine. Some have been small, some have been big, some have been basements, some have been the corner of my living room. And so I have all the tips for you today on using a small space for your craft room or sewing room. And these tips will apply to you even if you don't have a dedicated space. So let's get started. But before we do, make sure you click subscribe. And I also wanted to tell you that I just put nine reusable, washable coffee sleeves in my Etsy shop. There's only nine. So if you want one, go get one. And I'll put the link to these below. I just, on a whim, I was like, let me just make some coffee sleeves. They work on cold cups or hot cups, and they're adjustable in size. So go grab one of those if you want one. They make really great gifts. My family uses them for coffee all the time, especially iced cups, because they don't give you sleeves with the iced cups. So we keep them in our cars and our purses, and we love them, even the men in my family. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first I'm just going to give you a little tour of my sewing room. This is a 7 feet 9 inch room by 7 feet 9 inch room. And so it's a square, and then I have like a skinny hallway to the door. There's no lights in there, so we need to remedy that. But it's perfect for like my ironing board and my dress form to go in the hallway. It's plenty big enough for that. It appears that there is a closet in here, and there is, but it actually holds the um, furnace. So we can't actually use that closet, which is fine. But I made my cutting table, my giant cutting desk, fit in this room. It fits perfectly. There's room on either side. We just had to make the top a little bit shorter. My cutting table is actually a dresser that we got secondhand, and I painted it and replaced the knobs, and then my husband put a new top on it. And so this table stores, or this dresser table, stores all of my fabric patterns, tons of notions and things like that. And then behind me, you can see my sewing desk fits on the other side. So I have just enough room on my whirly chair to turn around in here and it hasn't been a nuisance at all. I thought maybe the chair would get in my way when I'm cutting, but it doesn't. It's perfect. Everything works great. So I did get some storage for the walls and things. I put all my little dolls on some shelves. I'll link to these shelves because it was a three pack. And one of them is perfect for like quilting rulers. Quilting rulers are hard to store, but I use them constantly. So I wanted them handy, but not somewhere where they were always falling over. So since the shelf has like a lip on it, it works perfectly for that. And so the shelves came with, the shelves came with three and they're like staggered in size and they're really useful and handy. I think I might get another set for somewhere else in my house. So I'll link you to those. I will also link you to my Husky desk. This is a workbench type of desk. It has long skinny drawers, perfect for my machines. It's on wheels. And since I have a door in this room, it's nice to be able to wheel it out of the way if we do need to use that door, which we really don't. Um, and it adjusts in height so you can make it taller, which is really nice if you have any back pain or anything when you're sewing or you find yourself hunched over a lot. That's because you're not using the right ergonomic height for your sewing machine and chair. So um, you can make your table higher and your chair higher and you can have everything at the right height for you. So let's get into my tips for small spaces. My first one, and if you've watched my videos before about like sewing room organization and things, then you'll know that I really prefer closed storage. If you start in a small space like this one and you just start cramming the walls with shelves and then you just pile bins on all of the shelves, it's going to feel like the room is closing in on you. So I really recommend keeping a lot of clutter off of the walls and put them away in drawers. That's why this Husky desk is great with these skinny drawers. Um, you can keep handy things out on your desktop, but you really don't need everything out. And I know it's tempting to get like the fancy thread spool holders and the pegboard for all your scissors. But if you start filling your small space with cluttery looking things like that, you're going to feel like it's cluttered. Instead, use drawers and closed storage. And then if you do need more storage, 
try to just putting everything on the floor, like cramming it into every crevice in your space that you have. Instead, think about building up by attractive shelves that go up and then resist putting bins of junk on them. Get nice looking bins <laughs> to store things in. Basically, you want to avoid visual overstimulation in a really small space. My second tip is to think beyond the typical sewing desk furniture. Furniture that is marketed for sewers and crafters is really not as handy as it looks. It's often chintzy, so it will shake when you sew. And then, you know, it has all these things that like swing out and pull out and unfold from closets or whatever. But it's really just not as handy and useful as it appears on those neat little ads. Because who wants to have to open up their entire wall cabinet and get everything in place perfectly before they can start sewing? To me, it just makes more sense to use things like dressers and this husky desk that's made for tools. I'll link to this husky table because someone else commented somewhere that they also use this table and they also love it. And I just think it's really useful and handy for sewing specifically or crafting because of the skinny drawers and the height adjustment. Also, it's so sturdy, so I can sew at top speed and it never shakes or anything like that, and that's what you want. I also have a wooden cabinet my father-in-law made me with just several small wooden drawers, not small, but um, shallow, they go from shallow to deep. So, so useful. Also, if you have, like my mom just sold a crafter, her old TV cabinet, you know, when TVs were giant and big and deep, she had this cabinet that fit so well in their house they lived in at the time. But now TVs are flat and they're on the wall usually. So she didn't have anything to do with it. And she just sold it to someone who's going to use it as a craft table. So in that case, she can stow her stuff away. I don't think that would have worked for sewing because you need leg space, you know. But think creatively with your storage. Get things that close that not everything is out. If you're having to rummage through plastic bins of fabric that you keep in your spare shower, that's not going to work for very long and you're going to be frustrated and you're going to forget what you have. Okay, also you can think creatively for things like ironing boards. In my house in Hawaii, we I just sewed in like a small hallway desk. Remember in the 2000s when houses came with like desks in random places? It was just a shelf, like a counter desk. It didn't have drawers or anything, but I was able to use a closet that was right next door to it for my storage. And then I on that closet door, I got one of those door mounted... Well, it just hung over the door and it it hinged down for my ironing board and they're kind of small and they even come sometimes with a place to hang up your iron so it can be out of the way when you don't need it and it can be out when you do so i'll link you to one of those too because those are very handy for people who have small spaces because ironing boards can be hard to find a spot for especially if you have little kids around because they can be wobbly and you don't want them to get knocked over and they can just be in the way so that is a really good solution for that also, you can try to find other spots in your house. So if you're sewing in a really small space that doesn't fit everything, like my space fits a lot, but I still have some extra stuff. So I had like some sewing books. I don't need to access those all the time. So I put them on my personal bookshelf in my bedroom on the bottom. And so, and then there's also like a coat closet right outside my sewing room door that I took over. We have plenty of other closets in the house. So we don't need it. And it has some shelves built in and it's perfect for that wooden cabinet my father-in-law built that keeps a lot of like my inner facings and ribbons and things I don't need right at hand all the time. But it is just right outside the door. So, and then it has shelves above where I can keep bins of yarn. My whole family uses the bins of yarn. So look for other places in your house that you can take over for some storage. It doesn't all have to be right together. Try to keep the things that you need to keep close at hand in your actual space, but otherwise you can take over other parts of the house too. I'm sure your family will not mind. <laughs> Another good place to keep things is those underbed storage bins. I mean, this goes for anything in your house that you don't need out and showing. But those underbed bins are so handy because they just disappear and they're shallow so you don't have to dig. Okay, so if you do not have a space at all, or if you're working with a small space like this, I want to reiterate that you actually need more space for cutting than you need for actual sewing. Your sewing machine table doesn't really have to be that big. You just need enough space to the side for your pins, you know, and your thread bowl. But some people think they need this huge desk for their sewing machine, but what you really need a lot of space for is cutting. So if you don't have space in your sewing area, or if you're using, if you're sewing in like a corner of your living room or something, you could batch cut on your dining room tables. You could do a lot at once, cut out several projects at once. Or in that hallway sewing space I used to use, I had like a white folding table 
And I could set that up temporarily in the hallway if I was really into something that needed a lot of planning space. Like I was making a choo-choo costume or something and I just needed the surface. And so since I only kept it up temporarily, my family was okay squeezing past me <laughs> during that time, especially because it was for one of them. So try to think creatively about where you can cut and when you can cut. I also recommend if you don't have a sewing space at all, resist the temptation to just take over the kitchen table because you'll be frustrated and your family will be frustrated. And if it's a scenario where you're going to have to clean up your sewing machine or put it away in a closet after every time you sew and you want to sew often, then try to find some desk or hutch that fits in the room somewhere and that you can keep your sewing machine out don't need a lot of space for the sewing machine and then you can still use your dining room table to cut and plan okay lastly try to think hard about lighting i have had some large sewing spaces that had terrible lighting and so i had little lamps everywhere cords all over the place because you really need a lot of light when you sew this room it came with some track lighting and it's fine for now i'm probably going to replace it with a little bit nicer lighting but it works for now and i have this ot light I will link to some ot lights because they're well known in the crafting world. They give off a very natural light, so nothing, none of your colors will be distorted and they don't strain your eyes. So I really recommend ot lights. I also have a small task light on my cutting table. What I really need is a task light over by my ironing board because this little hallway doesn't have any lighting yet. So once you move around in your space, you'll know where you need light. But don't be afraid to just put tons of lamps everywhere because you can't. You can't sew with strained eyes. It's not good for you. I don't know if you've ever sewn anything black, like hand stitching black or seam ripping. Black thread on black fabric is so hard. You really need a lot of light. I also have this around the neck light. It's super cool. I use it for reading or hand sewing or anything like that. I'll link you to that because I got my mom one for her birthday and then I bought myself one because they're so useful. It's the best book light I've ever had. It doesn't have to connect to your book, you know, and like flop over your pages. <laughs> So I guess my biggest encouragement to you is to find space in your home for sewing if you haven't done that already. Your family will be understanding if this is a hobby that you love and you want to do more often and your main deterrence to doing it is that you don't have a space to do it, make yourself a space. You can find a spot in the corner of some room. When my kids were little, I just sewed in the corner of my living room. And yes, there were pins out and scissors everywhere and I just taught them not to touch it and they were fine. <laughs> everybody survived and yeah it might not look pinteresty pretty like you might not be able to take some photo of your living room that looks like you could post it in a magazine but your house has to work for you right so find that little nook or cranny of your house and make yourself a space or this room i think was an office in her house the seller the seller of this house she lived here for over 60 years and um she had this room she had this whole house just piled high <laughs> So when we saw the listing photo, it was hard to even really tell what this room looked like or how big it really was because she had office stuff in here, but it was obvious she didn't actually use the office stuff because nowadays we have laptops. We don't really, unless you're working from home, you don't necessarily need a set computer space like we used to in the 90s when computers were new and big. So if you have an office space in your house, then you can take that over for sewing and you won't miss it at all. Or maybe you do have a home office and you can just put a little corner sewing space in there for yourself. Do it. You'll be so happy. If you have other tips for small spaces, please leave them in the comments because I know we'd all love to hear it. If you are surviving and thriving in your tiny sewing space, I really want to know those ideas and tips that you have. So please share those in the comments so we can all enjoy them. I'll see you soon. Bye.